we've been talking this week about a number of positions that we have in Christ, these, these great gifts the Lord has given us. And those positions have included dying to sin, being made alive to Him, being the prisoner of the Lord, being the slave of the Lord. These are all wonderful things. We're switching directions just a little diff bit today. We want to talk about the fact that uh, we have been gifted by the Lord to serve Him. And uh, that's something some Christians struggle with. They, they don't realize that, they, that they're gifted. They don't understand where they fit in the body of Christ. They don't know how to, they can come alongside others to minister and often have a hard time coming along doing that. But in four different New Testament books, we find that we're told that we have been gifted by the Holy Spirit for ministry to other people. And we find those, those particular passages and uh, in, in four different books, Romans chapter 12, Ephesians chapter 4, uh, 1 Peter chapter 4, and uh, uh, another one I just forgot, but we'll come back to it later. But never, the, oh, I'm sorry, 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and 13 and 14. All those passages deal with the fact that we have been gifted. So uh, what we do have here in Romans chapter 12 is kind of a summary of that. I think it would be helpful for us to look at these gifts he says in verse 3, For though the, through the grace given to me, I say to each one of you, not to think more highly of himself than he ought to think, but to think so as to have sound thinking, as God has allotted to each a measure of faith. So he starts off by uh, calling us to humility. Don't think of yourself as higher than you ought to think. Uh, and in our world, people are concerned about bad self images. Scripture never is concerned about that. Scripture is always talking about pride and arrogance. So he tells us, first of all, to, uh, you know, to humble yourself before the Lord, not to think more highly of yourself than you should. But at the same time, he says in verse four, for each of us uh, are members of one body and all the members do not have the same function. So as he's talking about the body of Christ, so we who are many are one body in Christ and individually members of one another. So there are many parts of the body of Christ, many members, as many Christians as there are uh, around, so they're part of that body. And if we're talking about a local church, which he is, I believe, because only in a local church can we really function in this way, then there are many members of a local church and each has a unique position. So he says... In verse 5, so we who are many are one body in Christ and individually members of one another, but having gifts that differ according to the grace given to us, whether, and then he goes on to start listing some of those. So, so let's look at this quickly. Every one of us is unique. And so while he told us in verse 3 to not, to not get arrogant and think high, more highly of yourself than you think, should think, he's telling us here that each of us have a part in the body of Christ. And he wants us to know those, those parts come together to function as a body. The illustration that he will use later, and the, especially in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, is that uh, there, there's no in, unimportant member of the body. Uh, some people might have more showy gifts. They might have more prominent gifts. Some might have more humble and, and behind-the-scene gifts. But all of us have been given abilities and gifts by the Spirit to minister to one another in the body of Christ. And therefore, there's no unimportant part. We each function as God has chosen that we function. Then he goes on to talk about here in, in all those passages, but here we see some of the gifts that he had in mind. And we're not going to spend a lot of time on that, but just showing how we're to use those gifts. He says in verse 6, whether prophecy in agreement with the faith or service in his serving or he who teaches in his teaching, or he who exhorts in his exhortation, or he who gives with generosity, and he who leads with diligence, and he who shows mercy with cheerfulness. And all of those, what he's saying is this, whatever the Lord has given you to do, whatever gift he has given you, do it with all your might. Do it, work it out to the full extent as possible in your life to serve him. If, you're, if you've been given, for example, the gift of of service, then serve and serve mightily. If you've been given the gift of teaching, then teach and do what do that well. He's, he's basically saying, don't worry about what other people are doing. Don't don't be uh, distracted by their giftedness. 
Look at what the Lord has created in your life, the gifts that he's given you and the opportunities that he's put before you and serve with all of your might in the body of Christ. That's a great privilege. It really is. And if you don't know what your place is in the body of Christ, let me encourage you right now to consider that and to think about that this weekend. What is, uh, what, where has the Lord placed you? How has he gifted you? What opportunities are yours? And how can you serve in the body of Christ as he's designed you to serve in that body? That'll give you something to think about, and I trust something that'll give you great joy as you do so. We'll see you next week.